Hi, my name is Random Tuesday, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through my Admiral Holdo cosplay from the Star Wars The Last Jedi. If you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to leave those in the comments section below, as well as head over to my website, randomtuesday.net, for other tutorials, resources, and information on this and many other cosplays. The main component of this cosplay is its dress, and that really is two separate parts, the collar and the the dress itself. Now I used a jersey rayon for the entire thing so you want to look for a material that's got full restretch because there's very minimal seams and you also want to make sure it has a nice drape to it so jersey rayon kind of hits that middle ground of aesthetic and price and function. Uh, colors to look for I went with taupe kind of emphasizing that brown gray sort of range. Uh, other colors to look for would be mauve and puce which is a terrible sounding word, but gets you a little bit closer to kind of the purple end of the spectrum and something a little darker than what I went for. Bulk of the, the construction of the dress is a cowl neckline dress. And so essentially you create a hourglass or whatever body shape outline you need. And then you wanna add extra material at the top for a cowl neck. There's a pattern for this dress available on my website, as well as a lot of online resources for how to make cowl neck dresses. In the back, you don't need the cowl neck. You just want it to fit straight across. And you'll notice there is a center back, straighten it up, a center back seam, which will help you have a really nice uh, cinched in fit to it. So all of your fitting is gonna happen on the side seams and the front seam and uh, back seam. Because the fabric is really stretchy, that does allow you to have a fair amount of wiggle room in terms of getting it around the bust and whatever other curves you happen to have, especially if you, like me, are not built like Laura Dern. After you get the basic construction done, you're going to uh, stitch in place the actual cowl neck right on the shoulders. And I actually added, you'll notice this doesn't really move, uh, some extra little tucking stitches to really keep these drapes in place in the front. That's kind of a matter of personal preference. Some cosplayers also added a center back zipper. Mine is stretchy enough that I was able to just put it on over my head. So rather than the extra fiddling, I opted for a slip on variety. One of the other things that I did with my costume was to double layer this section here. Some cosplayers also uh, fully lined the dress. That's definitely another option, but I didn't want to buy a, even more fabric because it takes a fair amount. So instead I used a fusible interfacing wonder under Bonda web brand names you can find to essentially double layer this intersection. So you can see this part right around here is two layers of the Jersey and then a single layer for the rest of the dress. That gave me sort of larger rolls, larger um, cowl neck, as opposed to what was happening with the fabric on its own, which was very small, delicate rolls. Well, not, not quite the look that I was going for. The sleeves are a very basic sleeve structure. Uh, again, it's super stretchy, so you can make it pretty tight and form-fitting. The trick to these is to make them a good solid 10 inches longer or kind of whatever your forearm measurement is longer. You're then going to take all of that material that makes up your forearm, gather it together and stitch it in place because that will, once it's worn, give you these very firm and in place extra little wrinkles like the dress has itself. In terms of finishing, I did very minimal. I didn't even hem it. Um, all I did in these places was tuck it under and tack it in place to keep that fold. And on the bottom hem, I just very carefully cut it. I, I measured the length of it once my shoes were on and, and didn't really worry about a hem. The stretch jersey doesn't fray, so that's a nice thing that you can work with there. Once you have the base of the dress constructed, I made the collar as an entirely separate piece, and then you can see I stitched it on to the cowl neck so that when it sits, it kind of hides that seam line among the folds and the rolls. The cowl neck shape is designed to go around the neck and then sort of narrow to a little bit more of a point on that front section where it, it tapers in. So it just sits around the neck. I then used hooks and eyes on the back to keep it closed. Uh, zippers, Velcro, a lot of other fasteners would also serve the same sort of function. Similar to the sleeve, the neck portion is slightly longer and then gathered so that when it's worn, it has all of the wrinkles that it's supposed to have. And much like the cowl neckline, I also tacked some of these rolls in place so that they just stayed in the shape that I wanted them to be. The other major component to this costume is the cape. And the cape is essentially a sort of large trapezoid 
where the sides are gathered together and move that over and then stitched in place. So I stitched all the gathers to this line of twill tape, which then gets folded under to hide both the sewing as well as to create a nice even edge on the top. So you get something where you have all of these nice little cowl necky things <laughs> rolls here um, and that kind of U shape. And you want to aim for something that sits sort of like lower back to bottom of the butt. The other part is then just a long rectangle also gathered and stitched to the twill tape. It just then flops over the top. You notice here on the twill tape, I've got a little bit of excess that I've sewn some snaps to. And that's the first part to keep it in place. But this whole thing is very heavy. So I created a, an additional system. This is then sits on the back of the dress snaps in place at the shoulders to keep it from moving too much side to side. So it sits kind of between the neck and the back of the dress. I then also have some little hooks and eyes here on the back to keep the neck piece and the cape together so that there isn't too much of a gap going on. Now to stop the cape from pulling the whole dress back because the dress is stretchy and the cape is wide, I have these elastic tabs and they just slip underneath and then safety pin to the bra that I'm wearing underneath kind of right here on the side. And that just helps pull the cape forward as opposed to having the whole thing constantly sliding backwards. With the dress and the cape, it's time to accessorize and Admiral Holdo has lots of accessories, very stylish. The first accessory, um, sort of accessory is her shoes. Now in the movie, they are actually the same color as the dress. So you can do a few options. You can make boot covers. You can find ones that are in the same color. I ended up liking the ones that I found. I found these at a thrift store. The main thing to look for is a sort of rounded toe and a block heel. The height is really dependent on how much taller you want or need to make yourself. And, and I wanted to gain a fair amount of height. I decided to keep these the way they are because aesthetically I liked how they matched. And also they were pretty good quality, but that's a really a personal preference. Her main and most obvious accessory again is her hair and her tiara. Now uh, I have a tutorial on how I made my tiara available on my YouTube channel. So you can check that out if you're looking to make your own. In terms of hair, you have a few options. I ended up using my natural, natural hair. I had a sort of lighter shade of this purple going on um, and the right kind of texture to work with. You can also check out there's a lot of wigs available and I have some suggestions for those available on my website. Her other key accessory is her bracelets and surprisingly enough these are available on eBay. So I purchased a set of two. Uh, they were about three dollars each including shipping. The only problem with them is they were the wrong sort of color. The design itself is as far as I can tell identical to what she's wearing in the movie. Uh, to get the color to match, I sanded them down a little bit, spray primed them, and then painted them over with silver acrylic paint and silver rub and buff to make it a little bit more of a dark silver as opposed to a super, super shiny chrome silver. Other than that, she has a few pieces of jewelry. She has uh, two separate rings. One of them is a sort of sparkly around the outside, kind of light purple uh, pink colored gem in the center. I found a similar sort of ring at a thrift store and just painted the center gem the correct color using, uh, in this case, nail polish. And the other one is sort of a more silvery kind of wire look to it. I found one that seemed close again at a thrift store and then it has some pearl look like drops on it, which I just made out of blobs of hot glue and then painted them with a pearl nail polish again. The final piece is her earrings and she's got these sort of uh, silver curls, <laughs> silver curls with a, a purple drop bead at the bottom. I made the curls out of warbler and then just attached an earring back to them and just used some purple beads that I had on hand. Thank you so much for watching my Admiral Holdo cosplay video. I hope you found it helpful. As always, head over to my website, randomtuesday.net for tutorials, resources, patterns, and a host of other cosplay goodness. You can also check me out live on twitch.tv slash randomtuesday. Definitely subscribe to my YouTube channel for information and updates on new videos, cosplay, and otherwise. And lastly, and never leastly, thank you to each and every one of my patrons over on Patreon who helped make this cosplay and this video a reality. If you're able to support me for a small monthly amount, you can help keep these and many other videos coming. Thank you so much for watching.